Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering Module 3 that is Gas Turbines and Combined Power System. So, in the, the last lecture of this module, we will try to emphasize the importance of gas turbines as a propulsion device. So, till in this last lecture, we have been giving emphasis on the gas turbine engines as a power production device. In this lecture, we will try to see that how gas turbines can be used as a propulsive device. Although this is not the part of uh, this course, but as a uh, continuation of uh, gas turbine systems, it is felt that we should give some emphasis on the crash turbine applications as a propulsion device. So, in this lecture, I will briefly introduce this crash turbine cycles as aircraft propulsion cycle. In addition to that, I will try to demonstrate a, a simple turbojet engines in which gas turbine uh, concepts were introduced uh, and uh, through this process, we will see that how uh, the thermodynamic concepts will help us for the gas turbine engines as a thrust generating device. Then we will also introduce some of the aircraft engines in fact that are also driven by this gas turbine engines. So, if you look at the basic cycle of gas turbine um, system, we have like a compressor, turbine, uh, combustion chamber, air is fed into the compressors. At, and it is after compression, uh, high, high pressure air and to some extent temperature also increases. It enters to the combustion chamber in which fuel is added. So, this is the heat addition process and then the, the combustion after combustion chamber, the gaseous products expands in the turbine. And here we have two options that from this exhaust gas, we can find or we can use this exhaust gas to generate the thrust. But with the conventional turbine, because turbines are meant for power production, so that is what it is coupled to generator and side by side it is coupled to compressors. So, these are power production devices, but that cannot be used means same uh, kind of components cannot be used for thrust generation. So, you require some kind of modifications and that modification we call them as aircraft propulsion cycles. So, this particular cycle which is shown in this figure, we call it as a soft power cycle and this is something like static power plants, gas turbine plants, typically land, marine engines, combined cycle, power plant, all these things. And for aircraft propulsion cycles, we expect that it should then give the thrust and it should give you the forward speed and altitude dependent because this propulsion cycle is also altitude dependence. So, some modification that need to be done for this conventional gas turbine cycles to be used for propulsion devices. However, the shaft power cycles we have seen many kind of modifications in the shaft power cycle like multi stage compression, expansion, heat exchange, reheat, intercooling. So, these are kind of a improvements in production of uh, um, power and efficiency. But our main attention in this lecture would be how gas turbine cycles are used for prop as a propulsion device. So, let us try to understand the very basic concepts that here same Breton cycles was modified in two forms. So, we have the what we got uh, we have two concepts here one is called jet engine concept other is called propulsor propeller engine concept. So, in a jet engine uh, what happens air comes to the compressor it is compressed and in the combustion chamber you add fuel. So, we get the combustion product at state 3 and it expands and after expansion you just do two things one is turbine whatever power is being developed that is to be used by the compressors and whatever expansion of the gas that we can fed it to a nozzle and this nozzle after expansion it will uh, give you the thrust. So, th this uh, this exhaust gas that means uh, by, uh, 
this is something like uh, Newton's third law of motion. So, when they exist for every action there is an equal and opposite reactions. So, when they exist comes back at the state 5 uh, and if this entire gas turbine system if it is taken as a single system. So, aircraft velocity we can get this way. So, you get the thrust in the other directions reverse directions. So, here the changes that we see we can see that compressor process remains as it is, but here expansion is done in two stages. one is for turbine expansion other is through the nozzles and this is shown as 1, 3, 3, 4 is the expansion the turbine and 4 to 5 is the expansion uh, is the uh, expansion in the nozzle, but only difference is that now turbine expansion gives you power expansion in the nozzle gives you thrust. This is one concept and the propeller engine concept uh, this is also similar things here we do not have a nozzle there, but rather exhaust goes out and that through that exhaust we get some thrust side by side we have a propeller and the propeller roll of the we have a propeller which is driven by this turbines. So, essentially turbine plays the dual role once is some uh, bare minimum due to the exhaust velocity we get one thrust. Other thing is that may or primary thrust which is being achieved through the propeller and the power driven by uh, power is supplied from a turbine to compressor as well as the propeller. So, we do not have a two stage expansion or we do not have a nozzle here rather single stage expansion in the turbine solves the purpose but they have their own limitations and applications. So, what we have is here we have at lower speeds that is less than 200 meter per second combination of propeller and eject gas, pro, um, gas provides uh, propulsive efficiency we call this as a turbo prop engine or propeller engine at very high subsonic speed may be more than 280 meter per second. The we have another device we will call as turbo fan or bypass engine. So, we will uh, we'll call uh, we will talk about later that, but actually the jet engine which is given by these things it is called as a turbo jet engines which is somewhere fall between a turbo prop engine and turbo fan engines. So, in a turbo jet engines we have a turbine that produces enough power to drive the compressors and gas leaving at the from the turbine at high pressure and temperature is expanded uh, to atmospheric pressure in a propelling nozzles. So, this is uh, what we have another engine that we have is like we have a turbo shaft engines they are normally used in the helicopters, but uh, uh, very basic other difference that we can have is we do not have uh, provisions for heat exchanger in kind in aircraft propulsion systems, because these units make the system very bulky and wet and it will add more weight that normally would, it is not expected for aircraft engines. Rather propelling nozzles and propellers they are integral part of gas turbine engines. So, uh, our main focus would be on uh, these two kind of nozzles diffusers these devices are uh, more appropriate for gas turbine applications. So, let us uh, try to consider uh, very uh, simple classical example which is uh, which is which is just to demonstrate Newton's third law of motions uh, or mainly Newton's law of motion. First thing is that rate of change of momentum is the force. So, this is uh, that means entire thrust is being generated from the through the rate of change of momentum for the gas. Then another uh, law says that uh, for every actions there is equal and opposite reactions. So, for that uh, with by using these two things we now think this uh, uh, this power unit this power unit is in this figure what is shown is power unit is your gas turbine cycle or which is uh, which supplies necessary power to the aircrafts. So, we we call this as a propulsive duct in which air enters at certain velocity which is equal and opposite to the forward speed of the aircrafts. So, basically air enters to the duct so we call this as a so this is power unit or we call as a propulsive duct. Now, in this propulsive duct this power unit is nothing but your 
gas turbine in, in engine. So, that is that way we model it. So, in this if you take this entire unit as a single entity, we see that air enters to the duct at a velocity C a we call this as intake air velocity and air uh, the leaves at uh, not air may be combustion products leaves at velocity which is called as exit jet velocity. So, we call this as a two velocity one is air velocity other is jet velocity. So, m dot C a stands as intake momentum or drag and m dot C j drag means it is the force that being experienced by this duct. Then m dot C j is the gross momentum thrust that means that jet that gives the thrust that when it comes out. So, resultant uh, thrust becomes m, uh, m into C j minus C a we call them call it as a momentum dux, momentum thrust. So, the momentum thrust is nothing but m times C, C j minus C a. So, the net thrust now becomes uh, momentum thrust there is another thrust that comes on that is that it comes due to the pressure difference. So, essentially uh, the aircrafts are flying at very high high altitudes pressure is less and side by side uh, side by side uh, there is also a pressure difference in the on the surface. So, ambient pressure and the pressure which is on the surface of the aircraft there are two there is significant difference. So, be, so this thrust add to the fact we call this as a pressure thrust. So, these two thrust net thrust necessarily gives the total thrust onto the vehicle, but however, at lower speeds the pressure thrust are not significant we normally call it as a momentum thrust which is nothing but f is equal to m times C j minus C a. Now, putting this net thrust that comes these things we define the propulsive efficiency which is defined as the propulsive uh, useful propulsive energy to the sum of the energy and unused kinetic energy. Essentially speaking the when a air enters it has a kinetic energy and when air leaves it is also has some kinetic energy. So, the entry energy and leaving energy they are equated by this energy balance with the fact uh, one energy that gives you the thrust necessary power for this thrust other energy which is we call this a unused kinetic energy that also gives you necessary enthalpy difference between entry and exit state. So, that part if you actually calculate we call this as a unused kinetic energy. So, this uh, so uh, we can define a term which is called a propulsive efficiency which is defined by this ratio. Now, this equation gets simplified. So, we, we say that propulsive efficiency eta p is equal to twice time by twi 2 by divided by 1 plus C j by C a. One significant inference that we can see here that when C a is equal to 0 f tends to maximum and propulsive efficiency becomes 0. When C a is equal to C j f goes to 0 and a, a, a propulsive efficiency becomes maximum. So, this gives two concept of a propeller jet and or a jet engines. Now, what happens is that uh, we require a balancing approach between C a and C j such that at a given speed we get best propulsive efficiency. So, thereby you we use the concept of propeller or jet engines. For example, if you use a propeller driven engines it, uh, it has efficiency much higher than the jet engine, but beyond certain limit beyond certain aircraft velocity let us say may be 500 kilometer per hour. Uh, so, this propulsive efficiency drops that means propeller concept does not work beyond this number beyond this aircraft velocity, but still if you want to travel faster then you have to use the other concept that is called jet engine. So, higher speed means jet engine is the best approach lower speed means propeller driven is in the better approach because they give best possible propeller efficiency. So, this is how we use the this is how the jet engine concept comes into pictures. So, one such simplified jet engine we call this as a turbo jet engines and this uh, turbo jet engines idea comes from the aircraft 
um, comes as air pro propulsion cycle and its main idea intention starts with gas turbine engines because they favor high power to weight ratio and uh, when you say turbo jet engines uh, we can expect uh, higher power at relatively lower weight. We also try to emphasize that we are not using any kind of heat exchanger or bulky devices to make it unnecessarily bulky or, um, or increasing the weight. So, essentially uh, when you say this turbojet engine it has few main sections one is called as a diffuser section, second is gas generator sections and third is the nozzle section. So, if you look at this particular figure we have shown th th in three sections here diffuser, gas generator and nozzle. And some uh, important events that happens at various locations and locations are noted as A, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, these numbers essentially says that when air enters into this engine it passes through different components. So, the first component that it enters is the diffuser. What does it do? It increases its uh, pressure at the cost of velocity. So, velocity when it enter velocity drops. So, initial velocity is high. So, it drops to 0 velocity ideally. So, when it enters to the compressor air uh, uh, relatively velocity is relatively close to 0 and when it enters the com compressor uh, the pressure uh, shoots up. So, the 1 2 process we call this as a compression process. So, first process it starts with a, a a to uh, 1 is the process in the diffuser in which we can see rise in the temperature, but and rise in also pressure uh, from P A to P 1, but drop in the velocity. And from 1 to 2 is the compression process, so it goes in this manner. And ideally we can see this process entire process to be isentropic both in the diffuser as well as in the compressor. Now, similar to this air enters to the conden, uh, com, to enters to the com, com, combustor where heat is added. So, essentially here we add fuel. So, in this cycle we can see that we add Q in heat, in, uh, uh, heat added into this uh, fuel through uh, by means of fuel. So, 2 to 3 is your heat addition process at constant pressure, then it enters to the turbine sections. So, the turbine section when it enters and, uh, and expansion has done in two stages. one is turbine other is nozzle. So, we have two sections here one is from 3 to 4 that is turbine and 4 to 5 that is nozzle. Similarly, the entry a to, uh, A to 1 is diffuser and 1 to 2 is compressor. Okay. So, um, uh, so, expansion and th there are two expansion, but this first expansion is just to produce power, second expansion the nozzle is to produce thrust and finally, the combustion product goes out at certain velocity. So, when uh, the combustion products leaves the turbine at a pressure significantly greater than atmospheric and expands the nozzle to very high velocity before being discharged to the surroundings. So, the overall change in the velocity relative to the engine rises the propulsive force or thrust. Uh, so, this change uh, rate of change of velocity gives, um, gives rise to and when, you, when it is multiplied the mass of the system it gives the necessary thrust and we call this as a propulsive force and thrust. But uh, there are some uh, advanced turbojet engines we have similar components like diffuser, gas generator, uh, nozzle, uh, but additionally we have some units like after burner. So, the role of after burner here because since the it, it should be emphasized that uh, jet engines are mainly intended for thrust. So, we require the efficient usage of fuel. So, 
So, that is that is the that is the reason entire fuel is not added at the combustor itself rather they are added some fuels are added in the uh, combustors as a primary fuel and as, uh, other fuels that gets added uh, in the section which is in the after burner and we call this as a secondary fuel. So, So, in order to have efficient use of fuel different sections like we have a combustor and after burner section uh, for addition of the fuel. So, through this process we can get an enhanced or increased thrust. So, now let us uh, uh, the more details we, you can uh, explore in various other aircraft propulsion systems, but in this particular domain or in the framework of our uh, syllabus, we will just try to explain the thermodynamic um, aspects behind a gas turbine uh, cycle which is used as a propulsion device. One such simple cycle is the turbojet cycle and we call this as a turbojet engine. So, an ideal turbojet engine has uh, 5 basic components diffuser, compressor, combustor, turbine and nozzle. So, the process uh, starts with A to 1, A to 1 means it is a diffuser that means air inlet to the diffuser and it and what does this diffuser do? It uh, diffuser the pressure uh, increases at the cost of velocity. So, at the end of the diffuser ideally the high speed uh, air velocity comes to the uh, um, to kind of a 0 velocity that means entire energy from the entire energy of air gets converted to the pressure energy. So, we get at state 1 P 1 pressure and that is supposed to be higher than P A pressure. You can also see here, so P A and P 1, P 1 is already higher pressures. So, after diffuser air enters to the compressors, so thereby the compressor load is also decreased. So, 1 to 2 to process now becomes the compression process. So, 2 to 3 is your combustion process in which we add he, uh, constant pressure heat addition. So, we add Q in that is Q in comes here and after this the um, uh, we have two stage expansion. The first stage expansion is three, 3 to 4 that is turbine and second stage expansion is from 4 to 5 that is nozzle and finally, the exhaust goes out. So, because since it is both side it is open to atmosphere, so there is uh, it is not a closed cycle. So, uh, so finally, the process stops at 5. So, there is no RO from 5 to A. So, diffuser um, um, there in the diffuser there is a rise in the pressure due to deceleration of air. In the nozzle there is a drop in pressure due to acceleration of air. And uh, analysis is, but however, this is just a thermodynamic estimates and we also encounter steady flow of analysis based on the first law of um, thermodynamics. So, however, real cycles will have different numbers when the components efficiency comes into pictures. So, that is the reason owing to irreversibility of actual engines there would be increase in the specific entropy. So, process will not be an isentropic process uh, in, uh, in the diffuser, compressor, turbines or nozzle. And of course, that will be a possibility uh, of conversion irreversibility, pressure drop in the combustors. So, all sorts of things uh, will be taken care when you actually take an aircraft propulsion course separately. But our viewpoint is different. So, here in this lecture, I will just try to see the thermodynamic estimates which is which is not an accurate number, but it can give you based on our thermodynamic analysis, we can find some estimates. Actually estimates means typically what type of velocity range we are looking at for a gas turbine uh, uh, engine. So, assumptions goes like components of an ideal turbojet, they operate at steady state except at the inlet and exit of the engine 
Changes of kinetic energy and potential energy effects are negligible at all other locations. The classical steady flow energy equation we use like this and uh, um, other important expressions that you can see velocity at the exit of the nozzle uh, for diffuser expressions. Ideally, when you set jet engines, normally this particular relation holds good, turbine drives the compressors. So, turbine work generated by the turbine is equal to work consumed by the compressors. So, with these working equations, this um, we can solve this uh, jet cycle, turbojet cycle. So, apart from this, there are other types of engines that are uh, available. First thing, we have two main category. One is the lowest, when you operate at lower speed, we have, we have a turboprop engines. So, turboprop engines you see here, we have a propeller here. So, most of the aircraft wherever you see these things rotating device, we call this as a propeller. And the other extreme case is that where there is no uh, turbo machine devices, it is a simple duct and in duct uh, uh, and whatever pressure difference that is created that is through this geometry. Uh, of geometry of this duct. So, we call this as a ramjet engines. So, this shape of this duct essentially uh, changes the pressure and temperature conditions within the medium. So, and, uh, and when, when there is an increase in the pressure with this increase in the pressure conditions fuel is supplied. This is nothing but your flame holder where fuel is supplied. And Finally, the jet expands. So, uh, to run a ramjet engines, we have to pass through these stages. Like we can, uh, we we initially run the engine to some speed, then allow this ramjet engines to fire. So, we have seen the classical engine turbojet engine, which is the very basic, and initial version of that was turboprop. But in order to improve those uh, efficiency of propeller and jet engines, we also have another engine called as a turbofan engine. So, what, what does this do? We do the same concept with additional change in the structure or location of devices, we can uh, we are introducing a kind of a bypass flow that means, we will have a one flow that goes in the engine core, other flow that goes out and they finally meet in the end and where the that fuel get that air and that fuel gets added in the after burner to generate extra thrust. So, we call this as a turbo fan engines. So, these, these are the kind of jet engines which are available as of now uh, on a commercial viewpoint. So, turbo prop engine consists of gas turbines in which gases are allowed to expand through the turbine at to atmospheric pressure and here net power is directed to the propeller which provides thrust. And typically the turboprop engines their capability is up to the speed 80, 850 kilometer per hour. Now, for turbofan engines we add extra attachment where we, we are using uh, nozzles first thing. Second thing uh, we also have two things one is a core air movement other is bypass air movement. So, through this process additional thrust enhancement is done and for which we can achieve speed up to uh, 1000 kilometer per hour. A special type of engine and of course, it is simple engine, but flow physics is very complicated and this simple engine uh, is without any turbo machine components and we call this as a ramjet engines. So, what is this ramjet engine? When we have a sufficient pressure rise in the air inlet or duct systems. The decelerating effect of high speed in, in a, a air in the diffuser uh, is known as ram effects. So, that is the reason we call this as a ramjet engines. So, for a ramjet engine to operate the aircraft must be in flight at high speed and initially it has to be powered through a conventional jet engine and subsequently ramjet engine has to be fed. And here um, what it gives due to this ram effect, the combustion products are expanded to pro in the nozzle to produce very high thrust. 
Another important aspect of all these engines they are called as a air breathing engines because they breathe air to run uh, the systems gas turbines. But um, and all these jet engine or aircraft propulsion devices they are air breathing engines. But at very high altitude or space travels this is not possible because at very high altitude or in the space there is no air. So, we require uh, we require separately fuel and oxidizers typically in the liquid oxygen and thrust is produced when high pressure gases are obtained on combustion and expanded through nozzle and discharge, discharge to the rocket and they are uh, known as non air breathing engine or rocket engine. So, rocket engines are uh, not air breathing engines they are non air breathing engines. But however, these concepts are of different um, nodes. So, it is better that we are not um, going deep into these concepts, uh, but our main it attention or focus of this lecture is to demonstrate this gas turbine cycle as a thrust production device. So, with this uh, I some uh, come to the end of uh, this lecture, but before we uh, disperse let me introduce the, uh, the problem which uh, based on the based on the analysis of our turbojet engine. So, the problem statement goes like this. So, here I have uh, given the sketch of a turbojet engine. This uh, AR enters the turbojet engine at 0 0.8 bar and 240 kilo uh, 240 Kelvin. So, inlet conditions is fixed at uh, I will say P A is equal to 0 0.8 bar and T A is equal to 240 Kelvin. Side by side we have we know this particular location. Pressure ratio in the compressor is 6 like after exit from this diffuser because it enters the diffuser after exit from the diffuser it reaches to state 1 and entry to the compressors. So, that number we do not know, but P 2 by P 1 we know it is 6 sorry P 2 pressure ratio in this compressor is 6 turbine inlet temperature is 1200 Kelvin. So, at condition T 3 we say 1200 Kelvin. Work developed by the turbine is equal to compressor work. So, we say W dot C by M dot is equal to W dot T by M dot. Turbine drives the compressor. The probe processes are isentropic in the all the components like we have diffuser, compressor, turbine and nozzles they are isentropic processes. There is no pressure drop or flow in the for the com, there is no pressure drop in the combustor. At steady state operations, we need to determine the velocity at the nozzle exit. So, the, the essentially we are looking at what is velocity at state 5 at this nozzle exit that is the question mark. And also we expect what is the pressure at each principal stage like what is P1, P2, P3, P 4 and P 5. Okay. So, uh, to start the problem let us uh, uh, do component wise. First thing you recall the equation for diffuser. So, the flow equation the diffuser has two parts one is uh, we can say uh, so because what this diffuser does after the air and uh, reach, uh, reaches at the end of the diffuser the velocity becomes 0 entire kinetic energy is converted to pressure energy. So, we can write this equations like P A plus half rho V A square is equal to P 1 plus half rho V 1 square. So, this becomes 0. So, and we know uh, we know P A 
that is 0 0.8 bar B A thousand kilometer per hour and that is thousand into 5 by 18 that becomes 278 meter per second. So, we can find out what is P 1 is equal to uh, 0 0.8 means 80,000 plus half rho rho take you take as 1.2 for air kg per meter cube V A is 278 square. So, this turns out to be P 1 to be 126.3 kilo Newton per meter square or kilo Pascal. Then we also expect what is temperature as well or enthalpy as well. We can write enthalpy equation as H A plus B A square by 2. Of course, your velocity at state 1 is 0. So, B uh, 1 square is 0. So, total enthalpy now becomes um, C P times T A plus B A square by 2. So, B A is known temperature T A temperature is given as 240. So, T A is 240 Kelvin take C P as 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin and we have B A 278 meter per second. So, this will give you H 1 as 279.8 kilo joule per kg. Then we have compressor. Compressor with equation we can write T 2 by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, P 2 by P 1 given as 6 gamma 1.4. So, this is means 6 to the power uh, uh, 0 1.4 minus 1 by 1.4. So, this number is 1.66. So, this will give you now, uh, now we do not know uh, T 1. So, we can but we know H 1. So, H 1 means uh, H 1 is equal to C P times T 1. So, this will implies T 1 is equal to um, 1279.8 divided by 1.005. So, this number is 278.4 Kelvin. So, we know T 1, we know this ratio. So, this will give you T 2 is equal to 463.9 Kelvin. Then we move to turbine. So, for turbine we write the working equation that is W T by m dot is equal to W C by m dot. So, this becomes H 3 minus H 4 is equal to H 2 minus H 1. So, for all the numbers we know uh, uh, that we have calculated uh, H 1 is H 1 is 279.8 kilo joule per kg. We have H 2 that is C P times T 2 and we have H 3 C P times T 3. So, T 3 is your uh, uh, T 3 is equal T 3 is our 1200 Kelvin. So, knowing this we can arrive at the expression H 4 is equal to 1019.6 kilo joule per kg. Okay. Then, uh, then we move on to from turbine we go move to nozzle. So, for nozzle uh, we can say the working equation B 5 is equal to twice times H 4 minus H 5 whole square root. So, we have already H 4 
we do not know H 5. H 5 is nothing but C p times T 5. So, when you say T 5, T 5 and, and T a, this is T a that is entry exhaust also goes to uh, atmosphere. So, we can say it is T 5. So, we, T 5 and T a we can assume it to be ambient. So, T a is already given 240 Kelvin. So, we can say T, T 5 to be approximately 1 uh, 240 Kelvin. So, C p times T 5 becomes uh, 241.2 kilo joule per kg. So, V 5 we can now find out uh, twice into 1000 into 1019.6 minus 241.2 whole square root. So, velocity V 5 is now becomes 1247.7 meter per second. So, we say velocity at the exit is at 1247.7 meter per second, but what extra term things that you require? pressure at each principal state. So, we have already noted down various pressures at all other components. What we have not noted down is P 4. So, P 4 that can be calculated from this turbine working equations like. So, again for turbine we can write T 3 by T 4 is equal to P 3 by P 4 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So, we know T 3 uh, that is uh, 1200 Kelvin. We have T 4 is nothing but we have H 4. H 4 is equal to C p times T 4 that is equal to 1019.6. So, this kilo joule per kg. So, T 4 we can find out as 1014.5 Kelvin. So, from this we can find P 3 by P 4 is equal to 1.78 and P 3 is nothing but P 2. Which implies P 4 becomes 4.25 bar. So, ultimately at end of our analysis if I uh, express my answers in a single chart what I can say pressure at each principal states. So, we can say P A which is ambient pressure at point 0.8 bar which is given. P 1 exit from the diffuser we have already calculated to be 1.263 bar. P 2 after compression of pressure rise 6 we say P 2 is equal to 7.58 bar. P 2 and P 3 are equal so we can say P 3 is also 7.58 bar. P 4 in the last slide we have calculated that is equal to 4.26 bar and P 5 it again atmosphere or ambient conditions that is P A uh, 0 0.8 bar. So, this is all about the pressure conditions at uh, uh, or principal states in the cycle and finally, what is the velocity? V 5 that is equal to 1 to 47.7 meter per second. So, this demonstrates that jet velocity is too high to give necessary thrust through this concept of gas turbine cycle implemented in this turbojet engines. With this I conclude this module. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.